My name is Jamie Lee Stark, and in this presentation I will be talking about whether or not violence has an influence on society. How media influences society. Violence does not have the same effect on everybody. I don't think that the media corporation should take any steps back from what they add to their content. Not everyone has been inspired to take on board and add to his or her lifestyle from what they have seen on television. If anyone feels that they must be like a certain character or appear what they have seen on screen, then they would need to be signed into a mental health clinic. The public should never ever blame the media industry for inspiring the psychotic people to commit these acts of violence on innocent people. Mentally ill people exposed to violence. Violence in media is not the result of viewers repeating them. Anyone that does feel the need to do so has suffered from the hypodermic needle effect and should do further research on what the matter before jumping to their conclusion. In other words, there are some mental issues happening to the, uh, that individual's brain that was either never addressed or just not taken seriously enough. Then those issues have built up over time and that person eventually exploded. This caused them to act out of the ordinary and perform the unthinkable. In doing so, it has ruined their very own lives with all the hopes and dreams down the drain. The media isn't to blame. Parents often blame the media. Parents shouldn't be allowing their children to watch violent content and the blame is entirely on them and not the media industry. They should have been keeping an eye on their child's mental well-being and development. It is not up to the media industry to look after their children's mental health and sugarcoat their material. This is what parenting is all about. The media industry is there to create entertainment and should not have to think twice about what they add into their work. Just because someone is going to be offended by a piece of art does not mean that the media must take their opinions into consideration. Films are certified with an age rating for a reason. If the media industry is seriously not concerned in whether they are handling their material right, then there are ways that they can help to decrease the issue. They already have an age restriction in place that not many people appear to follow. Hence, white children are also involved with the attempted murder and deaths of so many people in their household, among their friends, teachers and classmates. Recommendation There are a number of methods that parents can actually perform in order to make sure that the children are watching material that is appropriate for them. The parent can actually watch the program himself or herself before showing it to the child and determine if it is what they want the child to see or not. It means that the parent will know whether or not their child can watch it or if it is too much for their brain to handle. A new certification should be addressed before a film regarding how people may feel inspired by what they have seen. If they feel that they have, then they must see a doctor. I feel that there should be brands and movies awareness campaign set up it should be focused on people that are likely to commit acts of violence from watching programs. The programs need not be toned down, but there should be more observation with an individual who is watching violent content and how they respond to it. I know this is out of the media's hands, but I feel that there is some kind of promotional awareness video that they could create that can raise awareness that some people that are mentally vulnerable would benefit from. The age for ratings would, will need to be tighter so that people with mental health issues are less likely to see it. An ongoing issue is that some films aren't given the exact age range that they should be. My recommendation would be to ensure the target audience that the violent content is aimed at are unlikely to repeat to what they've watched previously. Interview with Daryl Sloan. Daryl Sloan is a full-time IT technician, YouTube blogger, former independent filmmaker and self-publishing author. The reason that I had chosen to interview Daryl Sloan was because he is one of my closest friends and he has a lot of knowledge about the media. Darrell is very outspoken and maintains an open mind whenever it comes to discussing topics. I knew that Darrell would put a lot of thought into the questions that I would be asking him and he would give me a lot of feedback. I feel that Darrell made a very made a very lot of good points whenever he talked about the issues that I had mentioned to him. Darrell was able to back up his entire opinion beyond question and didn't hold back anything that he thought. I found this trip very useful because it meant that I was able to learn more about his perspective on the media on a deeper level. Darrell took the media side, defended them for being responsible and the people who reenacted what they witnessed on television. We were both able to reference shows such as The A-Team, The Shield, Breaking Bad and The Walking Dead in order to explain the topic further. This made it easier for viewers to understand the subject better and they form a better opinion on what they truly thought about the topic whether they agreed or disagreed. Evaluation I have carried out research on how violence affect society and even went as far as interviewing another person how they felt about the issue, which was Darrell. So in this presentation I will discuss the current issues with violence in the media and also help make an issue for future media corporations to follow by. This is so that there is a little chance of viewers copying what they have seen depicted in films.
first of all, I had used the internet in order to understand the entire violence and media issue, how it was affecting people, and what it was about that the material made these individuals repeat them. I also analysed why those people reenacted from what they had previously viewed on screen, as well as determine which side may have been in the wrong. I uh, used various websites to extract information from that I would be able to use up for my research. A lot of websites blamed the media and supported the people who performed the violent acts and vice versa. This, there were even people who were actual biased about the whole subject as well. The strengths of using the internet were that I had to access a wide range of information. I was able to check that it was accurate and use many sources to back up the data I collected. It was also very quick to use as well. Weaknesses. I spent a considerable amount of time visiting different websites and reading all the information that was on it. Some of the websites I had visited had information that was based on the subject, had, but not the type that I required. This was down to the fact that the information was not strong enough and meant that I had to spend more time visiting other websites to find it. Effective. I found the information on the internet to be a great use and helped me to understand the issues with violence in media. It also provided me with deeper knowledge and I was able to form my own opinion from the whole subject. The information was of high quality and I was able to add links to the websites as a reference to my report and bibliography. Questionnaires. I feel that I probably could have been more creative with my questionnaires. There are plenty of questions that I would ask now and then that I simply didn't think of at the time. The response from the focus group would have been very interesting had I have asked a different set of questions than I was already asked. Although I did find that the response I received from the focus group were similar as they all agreed to an extent. Everyone felt that if you have copied on screen violence then you would need mental therapy to diagnose the reason why you would have done so in the first place in order to help yourself get better. Comparison. I pretty much carried out everything that I intended to at the start of my research. I do however feel that I could have interviewed more people and obtained more information from other sources such as the library. I had gathered a lot of information off the internet and checked that it was accurate. Everything had gone the way that I thought it would. I am, ha I am happy with what I got in the end though. If all was to go well, my research could quite possibly be added in the filmography magazine. This might actually benefit those who are interested in film. It could even go to a standard magazine or even a newspaper in order to inform society each side about the issue, instead of just reporting all the issues that have been happening regarding the topic. I strongly believe that the research I perform should be released to the public. This will help them understand what is actually happening with these people and also give us further insight into the issue. I had to research the topic on the internet in order to understand everything better. There is not much data about the issue released to the public regarding it. The reason why this could be the case is because scientists are still studying it and they are trying to learn more about it as much as possible. As the moment that they discuss this to the public, it could worsen the scenario or even have the media in a predicament. I think that they want to learn as much as they can about the issue so that they are able to reassure everyone that they will get to the bottom of it and that everything is under control. If this was discussed more in the public, they may overreact and start campaigns about banning brands and films. This could outrage and disappoint many fans of the genres that have brands in them if these campaigns would be successful. If I had had more time, if I had had more time, then I would have interviewed more staff at the college. There are four members of staff that I would like to have interviewed. The knowledge that those members of staff would have had would have been extremely valuable. I would have had a montage of their interviews spliced together as one. I would probably have done something creative such as having them answer each other's questions as well. The limitations. The only limitations to those ideas were that getting a hold of some of those staff members would have been difficult. One of them is currently unavailable, while another one is part of management I would not be in the main campus that I'm in as much. Thank you for listening.